please welcome Miss Allie. Woo! Hey. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. That was such a warm welcome. <laughs> it, look, I try to do my very best when it comes down to welcoming. And uh, first of all, it's what I call the biggest icebreaker you know, because then you're like, okay, so this is what we're going to talk about since this uh, show is unscripted. So it makes it a little easier for, for uh, you know, for usually the guest um, to kind of get a preview of what's going to, you know, what the conversation is going to be about. <laughs> totally. It's the Frack and Friends show. So we're just chatting like friends. It's all natural. It, that's, that's the most important thing is just <laughs> making it not, even though I do edit, you know, especially with, with my ums, people are like, why do you edit? You know, and I'm like, if you would hear how many ums I say in an hour, you would say, OK, OK, you know, which, by the way, I used to not edit. Uh, but then I started listening to myself in the car and I was like, yeah, these ums have got to go. <laughs> it's all natural except for the ums. <laughs> and ums are the only things I think I say multiple times. But. Uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Frack and Friends show. This uh, this show is a spinoff of uh, the original show I was a part of, and it's a continuation of everything that was built from that show. And basically, the premise of this show is just bringing on people to tell their stories, whether they're celebrities, whether they're just real. I'm, I'm not even going to say normal people, but real people, uh, you know, totally authentic. And, uh, you know, it's a... It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. So I want to go ahead and first open up with an introduction. I think it's very important because even, you know, I tell people all the time, even the Frack and Friends show isn't known by every single person of the, in the United States. So we want to kind of introduce you to the listeners, to the watchers, and anybody who's just watching, you know, period, who's watching this episode. So why don't you go ahead and give us an introduction about yourself? Okay, totally. So my name is Allie Tierney, and most recently I just put out a book. It's for children, but I mean, I know you love it, right? So I do. <laughs> it's for everyone, especially if you are living that boy band, fangirl, fanboy life. Like, this is for you. It's called B is for Boy Bands. It just came out over a month ago so it's still really new and it's really fun and it's just been a passion project to come to life so I kind of just feel like everything is coming full circle because I have been my first fangirl memory was when I was four years old so that's wow. literally 30 years old uh, like 30 years ago and now I have a four-year-old so he was just with me at a concert this weekend. So it's all like beautifully falling into place now. Wow. That is incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. Uh, well, let's go ahead. Uh, since you started this off, let's go ahead and dive into that. Let's talk about your very first fangirl moments that you, okay. that you can actually recall. It's a little embarrassing. So <laughs> I have older cousins who I always thought were like, the freaking coolest and they still are i still think that and i got some really good hand-me-downs mm -hmm. um <laughs> a few items being new kids on the block sheets and a sleeping bag so i was four years old sleeping on these sheets and i loved joey mcintyre Oh, and another hand hand-me-down item was the vhs of like their concerts and they did a cover of Just Call My Name and I'll Be There. <laughs> so I took that quite literally <laughs> at four in the middle of the night, sleeping with my Joey McIntyre pillowcase. It had to be on the Joey side. Wow. And I was screaming on the top of my lungs for Joey McIntyre. <laughs> Which totally seems like inappropriate because I was four years old screaming yeah. for I mean, a man to me to just appear in my bedroom and, you know, woke up my parents is like calls this whole stir. But that is that's my first fangirl moment that I can recall. Wow. And that was just four, like you said, four years old. I told you it was embarrassing. I don't I don't even remember anything about me as a kid or anything at four years old. Um, you know, I, I was born in 92. So my fanboying moments 
even fangirling moments. Like it didn't start until probably when I was like five. I think okay, five. Okay, so you know, far off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got a point there. Cause I, cause I can exactly remember like things, especially when I'm like six and seven, especially. You know, my my whole life had like kind of just started like with this revolution about boy bands and sure you know e even before the boy bands i just remember aaron carter like being the first per one of the first people i've listened to you know i just remember you know living it up because we're here to party and a bouncy bouncy gonna make you happy like i just remember like all you know having the cassette you know aaron carter had long hair he's a young young kid yeah. um like wow you know aaron oh aaron well, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, wow. And it's just at that time, I remember that was Aaron Carter. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was introduced to the Backstreet Boys. Um, and the funny thing is, I know like you were introduced to New Kids, but I wasn't introduced to New Kids till a while later. Till later, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't get to see them like as a child. I yeah. didn't see them until like, my 20s which was just as fun and obviously when they take the stage like <laughs> you still get that feeling which yeah. is just like hello that's why i'm still riding this boy band wave like there's nothing <laughs> like it <laughs> i mean that's really absolutely true you know i always tell people you know i've been i've seen all the legends i've seen all the amazing people you know that you can see especially of the uh, of the 90s and 2000s and even 70s and 80s and 60s but when I go to a boy band concert, there's like nothing like it. The I energy, know. the crowd, even New Kids and Backstreet Boys, I tell people it's two different energies. It's yeah. two different concerts. The fans are completely different from one another. And it's just, it's a lot to take in because it's just not like you go, you go to a concert and you're, you're bobbing it. No one's bobbing their head when, no. when step by step comes <laughs> on, you know, like, oh, when, you're the moves i mean you know even uh you know hanging tough and you know please don't go girl when joey when joey is still doing that song after 30 plus years oh. people are not there just saying just staring even the guys you can't you can't I know. my you husband know? has seen them with me he gets it <laughs> he doesn't have a choice but he gets it yeah yeah i mean you know thankfully i i found a girl who's uh been amazing uh these last six years and she just loves boy bands. You know, she traveled to, uh, to Vegas with me to see Backstreet Boys. My very first Backstreet concert uh, was uh, the first Vegas residency front row pit catwalk. I mean, it's incredible, right? And, um, you know, she's always 100% on board going to any and every concert. I've taken her to see her, her people <laughs> like Taylor Swift and uh, Ariana Grande and uh, I regret both. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, I should be at a Backstreet Boy concert or something or, you know, so something else. But, oh. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's been an amazing ride, you know, with concerts because my first concert really was New Kids on the Block, Nelly and TLC when I was, I think, 20 years old. I went the, to that tour. I was the there. main <laughs> event. Yes. Yeah. Block party was the opening and they, they came out and uh, they just had those the hoods on. Numbers. Yeah. I mean, look, that, oh, I still talk about it like it was yesterday, but that show was my, my biggest mistake in my life because after that I was hooked. Like it was just yes. crazy. Cause you know, and I, I had gone to New York uh, in May and I had a decision to make and I, I hate, you know, I'm, I made the right one, but I just hated the, you know, two choices, new kids in the block or New York. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I can go see new kids. And I kind of thought about going see them in Atlanta like two weeks ago, but I didn't do it. But, um, you know, that was the first new kids in the block tour that I missed since main event. It's tough. Sometimes you got to let them go. Look, I am yeah. really sad. I did not get to see the Backstreet Boys this tour. Um, they were really? actually in Austin when I was in New Jersey for the book launch. So I missed no. there. And then last night they were in New Jersey. So I've been like crying all day, like trying to avoid <laughs> the 
media because I'm like seeing everybody post from the Jersey show. I'm like, I can't yeah. do that anymore. But sometimes you, you can't, you can't hit them all. Yeah. Do our yeah. Do our best. <laughs> and I'm pretty good at hitting, uh, you know, everything that I want to go do. And uh, I, I do some crazy things to, to make it happen. But obviously, you know, my plane was leaving at, uh, I don't know, like 11 a.m. that morning and New Kids was until 8.30 or so at night. And um, But, you know, I, I kind of lived through everybody else on this one. You know, it was a really cool perspective because for years people would like live through me and just, you know, me telling them all about it. And this time, you know, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and um, and just lived through it, you know, uh, lived, uh, you know, just through it with all my friends who actually attended the concert and uh -huh. which... I mean, the, the concert looked amazing, but as far as DNA goes, you know, I, I've seen it three times um, and it was fantastic every time, including this last time. It was just a couple weeks ago. I was in uh, the Woodlands and had an absolute blast. A lot of frackers, um, man, they're just <laughs> it was a great day with those guys and those people and um you know, it's uh, I was very lucky to be able to go back to it. And I thought about not going because, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not really the guy kind of guy or kind of person who likes to go to see like someone like 40 times on the same tour. I Got know it. a lot. I know a lot of people are. I know a lot of people, especially a lot of the frackers, you know, they've been to 45 dates already, like in a, since DNA started, you know, three years ago. And and I'm just like, you know, I just can't. <laughs> style <laughs> yeah yeah you know and I, I just i feel like you know i could be doing a lot more thing a lot other things and like going to new york you know again and again and again and again <laughs> right but you know um but yeah so uh what, what exactly was your inspiration for uh b is for boy bands um it's something that i've always wanted to do and honestly like I wrote the first draft like over five years ago before I even had kids, which wow. is crazy. Like I, I love to write. Um, when I did my radio show, I did a lot of like celebrity poems and it, it like comes naturally to me. And I, I love doing that. It's a passion. So yeah. one day I just put it together and it kind of just like sat and enough was enough. I was like ready to do it. This is my passion project. I'm putting it first and that's my goal for the summer. And I wound up meeting like the perfect publisher and everything yeah. fell into place. And like, we have to talk about my illustrator. We'll, we'll talk about her. Yeah, but, for sure. Like, so I, hand, I delivered the illustrations and like the copy and the story and everything. And like, it was a quick turnaround and I can't, I can't believe it's out. I can't believe wow. it's been out for almost two months. Like we're talking about my book. Like that's, yeah, it's really exciting. So I just wanted to do it and now it's just it's so fun because it's a way to share like my love and my passion yeah. even though it seems silly to some people about boy bands it's way more <laughs> than that but like yeah. I, I share it with my own family and my friends are sharing it with their families and it's just really a great way to like get everybody involved and, and that's the thing because just reading i've read it a couple of times now uh, to, my dog, to my dog mostly uh <laughs> and she loves it she loves boy bands but like just reading through it you know it's not you know it's not something for just adults you know not something for just teenagers it's it's a little bit of everything for everybody especially if you're all about nostalgia uh i mean there look you know there's this, there's a picture of nsync there guys like I mean, and, and the back says, five boys who sing and dance, some might not understand, but the music, memories, and friendships make them more than just a band. Like, yes! I mean, that is incredible. That's so well written. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think it's important, you know, because this is, this is something of longevity uh, that's going to go on for years and years and years. It's going to be around forever. And just just like our boy bands, just like the the bands we loved and loved as children, to you know, thirty years later. <laughs> no, I know. But it's really, really well done, and uh, definitely going to provide a link at the bottom of this uh, video for 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 the everyone to purchase as well. And uh, I, I, I've encouraged people to purchase uh, weeks ago, <laughs> once I uh, once I received my book, and um, I think I had a couple people do so, but. 
it's um it's just so cool it's you know it's not for babies it i mean i guess you could say it is but like i mean i is for inconsolable like you got me there when like, you hear some breakup news oh <laughs> my gosh we shouldn't even go there yes. no <laughs> no man so let's go ahead and actually talk about something that's uh that pertains to that is growing up in the 90s you know so you said you're 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 a little older than I am, not much at all. But um, you, well, you, this is a good thing because you can remember things. Me, you know, I'm I'm sure you remember the the early '90s. Me, I have no recollection that I was even born. I was even a part of this early '90s. I just remember everything from like '96 to 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 now. Okay. So I want to ask you, what was life for you growing up? Uh, in the 90s, what exactly were you listening to or, you know, your favorite movies or actors? You know, oh, your, of man. course, your your uh, your crushes. <laughs> oh, man. OK. So obviously, Joey McIntyre. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that started soon, like real early. Um, but I had a brother who he's three years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like went through the 90s together. So there was a <laughs> lot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ooh. Three Ninjas, we watched over and over and over again. Um, I was obsessed with JTT and yes. Sawa. Like I was boy crazy um, and obviously all my boy bands. Like I literally would make up dances and force my brother to wear costumes, <laughs> do the dances. And I mean, I watched his shows and then he was in my shows like, <laughs> It was a wow. compromise. But it, was a cool, it was a cool way to grow up. <laughs> That's incredible. That's um, <laughs> I wish I had thought about that making my because I, I I grew up with uh, let's see, four sisters. Wow. And uh, my mom and dad divorced, so I was you know the only other person in the house with my with me and my dad was my sister Megan, and I don't think I ever forced her or to do anything like that, but I, maybe I should have, you know. Uh, because I was crazy into boy bands as a kid. I, I, I still am. There's nothing that, you know, if, if anything, it just, my love and respect and, and craze grew stronger, but, you know, growing up for me, yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of martial art movies, you know, different things like that. But, you know, especially in the nineties, I just remember it was all about Britney Spears and, uh, Backstreet Boys and, um TLC Nelly you know like you had all these different people especially when I when I could start you know recollecting different memories you know Spice Girls oh yes you know? platforms I was like <laughs> begging for platforms my mom's like you break <laughs> your little fifth grade ankle like that's that's not something we're doing that's not part of our back to school shopping oh Sorry. no <laughs> no man but you know, it's um, you know, there was a lot, a lot going on in the '90s, um, especially you know, I had talked about this with uh, 30 AF, but you know, like computer computer games, you know, there was, you know, you go on a website and you you can go on PBS Kids or Fox, you know, Kids.com and Disney, you know, I I guess it was DisneyChannel.com at the time, and you know, you had all these different uh, things of you know with Hillary Duff or you know, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody in the early 2000s. I mean, you had a lot of, a lot of things you could do as a child. Um, so my, my favorite things was, of course, you know, with technology as a young kid doing those kind of things. And, but also being outside, riding my bike, you know, uh, playing Power Rangers, morphing, and it just <laughs> didn't work and never morphed, no matter how many times I said it's morphing time and did exactly what Jay, you know, Jason David Frank did. And, just didn't work. So when it comes down to memories for you, what were some of the things you were doing as far as like those kind of things for activities? Uh, well, my first computer memory had to be enhanced CDs. Hello. <laughs> how did you miss those? Go, that's crazy. How amazing were those? Like incredible. Take the Backstreet Boy CD, put it in your huge <laughs> computer and then you yep. get to watch the music video wow and, like 
We just don't have that type of technology anymore. It's a shame. <laughs> it's just not. It's just not cool. You know, like I tell people all the time. You know, I remember having to go to. A, okay, so there was this these little this little bitty thing, and you had earbuds for it. You put in the little chip, and it would play a song. Oh, like thirty seconds. Called yes, Dream Street and Britney and yeah. Backstreet. You know, and now. How, how advanced we have become. Everybody's so spoiled now. Nobody has to work. Yeah. <laughs> no one has to lift a finger. You know, everyone says we still don't have flying cars. And mm -hmm. I always say, but we still have everything else that, were, that was in movies. If you, you want to really watch the Backstreet Boys video, you just, you can do it on your phone. You don't need to have an enhanced CD. I mean, it's really kind of sad. <laughs> it's really sad because, you know, uh, new kids recently, uh, you know, performed the song and uh, released it called "Bring Back the Times." Uh huh. And that song struck a chord with me in so many ways because I, I miss the old times. I miss it, you know. And after I did this episode with Thirty AF, uh, the last segment was us talking about computer games. I went and spent fifty dollars. On a, it was on sale, <laughs> but it was uh, 32 games, like Putt-Putt, Pajama Sam, <gasps> all these. It, everything was Pajama in one combo. Sam and Backyard Baseball and all that. <laughs> all of it was in one combo on Steam for $49.94. Worth it. And I, it. I pulled the trigger, and I got to say, they were right about something. I started playing Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon. And I just started bawling. And I'm thinking about right now, I'm about to ball because oh, don't do that. Th those are those are good memories for me. Those were the times where, you know, I may not remember things as a child or much of anything as a child, truthfully. But my goodness, when I put that on there and heard putt putt goes to the moon, I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, I get it. I get it. Like we played a lot of Echo the Dolphin on stage <laughs> and stuff. And yeah. I have an early memory of like my mom was addicted to it and she was in my room playing it in the middle of the night. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So it was really cool. I got to like stay up late and I was watching her. And um, our last trip back home to New Jersey, my brother who's three years younger than me, he actually mm -hmm. has a Sega and he brought it over and set it up Ooh. for my four year old and they were playing echo. So like everything is coming full circle. So that's really cool. And, and that's the thing, you know, what, what what was lost is never lost forever, it seems, especially when it comes down to music yeah. and movies and television. I mean, let, let's 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 talk about that for a second. But, you know, the things I was watching as a child or as a uh, even a young adult, they're still on. They're, they're still around, you know, like, uh, of course, the big favorite is Friends. Right. Okay. You know, like Friends has just never stopped being this big phenomenon you know 20 plus yeah i mean well, i guess more than 20 years ago now but 20 plus years ago and music i mean the boy bands you know backstreet said as long as there'll be music they'll be uh, coming back again they never quit i mean almost 30 years later they have never had to come back again but they continue coming back with tour at the tour of the tour and uh then you have you know movies i mean uh, like like you just said with with the dolphin game, like that was so many years ago, but you can bring it back and even introduce a brand new gen, you know, couple generations now, you know, and and people think it's like so cool, you know. Yeah, it's awesome, and honestly, all this stuff is like really such a sense. Of, it's like a safety blanket, and it's a comfort yes. thing because yes. there's a lot going on, and like it's just good to like you know go back. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Put the blinders on for a second and like go back and like just. <sighs> I love. It. Breathe it's it in. Be place. <laughs> gonna listen to the same album over and over and over again. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> I mean, for me, you know, I have Spotify now. You know, one of those things that make you know makes my life easier. I don't. I no longer have to. I only have fourteen uh, tracks a CD. Uh, it's incredible, right? Uh, I now have 7,000, I think 89 uh, songs on my Spotify that I can just hit shuffle all. And I'm very thankful because the majority is nothing but 50s through 90s. 
Okay. You know, and especially when it comes out in the last year, uh, I think the last thing I downloaded as a full album was Olivia uh, Rodrigo's album. Okay. Because I was very, very, very moved by her words. Uh, <laughs> <Balls>. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, it's just incredible how, you know, we, we can bring back things at, you know, a snap of a finger now, you know, yeah. it was a process, you know, loading up web pages back then with dial up, right. You know, you, you had to tell your mom, mom, can I use the internet? And then it took another three minutes just for it to come oh back. Oh my gosh. And that <laughs> awful sound. And I <sighs> remember like downloading photos on AI yeah. and I was like pixel by pixel by pixel. Yes. By DiCaprio. And I'm like, <laughs> so worth it <laughs> and then it's i had to actually, actually like print it because yeah. you know it's a whole <laughs> process it, it is and you know what's what's special about that was we, we we learned patience as a young child or as a young person it really taught us a lot about patience nowadays you know for instance i have one gigabyte internet here it's you know 1200 megs mm -hmm. growing up i had I don't know, like 356 kilobytes, which is not even one meg for yeah. speed. I mean, and so, you know, nowadays, especially with the the new generations who have who have grown into this of everything being at your disposal and the speeds are being supersonic, ultra fast. But these kids today just that's one thing they're missing out on is patience, you know? <laughs> it is. Everything is very like instant gratification. Like there's so many like if we get some screen time, there are so many options to choose from. Like we yeah. have every streaming thing that you can think of. So it's almost too many options. Um, yep. But you know, that's why we bring it back in to the live reading and that's you know, right. get old school. <laughs> that's right. We, we, uh, we grab our uh, VHS tapes and watch, you know, different things of, uh, you know, that we were a part of. And I have a couple of tapes of me as a child and I'm, I'm performing, Backstreet Boys songs at different events and and uh, and places and my grandma bought a a, a VCR recorder a tape recorder and she used to like film me dancing and singing and doing all the moves and you know it's you know and those kind of things bring back to the sim a simpler times and it's just you know those moments are the biggest things that I miss and uh, and lately the last few weeks it's just been a rediscovery for me you know, going back to these old things like those computer games and, you know, it, it just reaches me like nothing else today, you know? And that's fine. Like we, we have our thing yeah. and this is what makes us happy. And there's nothing wrong with like owning that. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I moved from New Jersey where I was a morning show host on a top 40 radio station came to Austin where it was just my boyfriend and I, who's now my husband, <laughs> but it, it's, it was such an adjustment. And I felt that I like lost myself, honestly, a yeah, long yeah. way. And then I started having babies and I like, <laughs> I went from talking to how many people every morning before 10 AM on the, on the radio show to like, okay, now I'm, I'm just, I'm just talking, I'm with kids all day. So it, it <laughs> really, it was a lot, a huge adjustment, but now yeah. like, I feel myself like doing the stuff that I love and I feel passionate again. I feel creative again. And be as for boy bands has been such an outlet and I'm just like running with it. And I, I just love it. I'm reconnecting with a lot of people and even just reconnecting with the memories. And that is making it so much fun. And we just, we actually just took the kids to see, um, the Pop 2000 tour this weekend. Oh, so let's it's a let's, family affair over here. So let's definitely dive into that. What was the experience of being with your kids in those moments? Gosh, well, this is not their first rodeo. For <laughs> the little one, he's not even one and a half yet. I think. Wow. No, he saw he he's seen Machine Gun Kelly already, but um, oh, he's that's seen it all. That's a different. <laughs> show. Um, <laughs> this may have been his. I think his first boy band experience. So wow. um, Simon, the oldest one, he's seen Hanson a couple times, um, you know, 
He's a ride or die. He'll go with mommy. Um, it was so much fun. I made them shirts because that's <laughs> what you do when you are a veteran fangirl. Um, have you seen Turning Red? You've had to have seen it. So I have not. Um, I'm really, really behind on Disney Plus originals and such. I'm sorry. <laughs> but this one, this one is worth it, okay? Yeah. Like, it, it really captures the entire... That's like, what they told me about Frozen. I am still still haven't seen no, it. No, but this is, like, for <laughs> and lovers specifically. There is yeah. a band in it. It's called Four Town. I know. I've seen the scenes of that. Oh, it's amazing. It really depicts it so well. Like, you feel it. With, definitely with the main character and her friends like they i'm like i get it i get it <laughs> um so the boys they love they love that movie and we've seen it so many times they love the songs and everything so i made them shirts that said i thought my mom said four town <laughs> <laughs> misunderstanding but they had <laughs> so much fun my big one actually he he fell asleep on my husband like halfway through, but the little one was like rocking the entire time. Oh, come on. It was great. We had so much fun. And yeah, O-Town it, killed it. Like they went always. so hard. <laughs> always. They they put on one incredible show. I got to see them twice now in the last year. Um, actually, um August let's no, actually, I don't know, maybe today or something or Yesterday, last year was the first time I, I'd never seen O Town in Houston, mm -hmm. okay. and then in August I was able to see them hang out with them backstage with a bunch of other people uh, for about 12, 13 hours, oh my God. <laughs> and that was uh, that was incredible too because that was everybody from TLC, um, Chris Kirkpatrick, Ryan Cabrera, like all these different people backstage just hanging out and you know all of us complaining that you know. We were just in this big backstage area just for celebrities and media, and there was no chairs, no water. <laughs> it was oh. it was pretty entertaining. It was pretty entertaining, <laughs> but you know, poor guys, they had to go perform, and uh, you know, it was very, very, very hot that day too. <laughs> it was so hot. So they actually moved the show because we're in Austin and we're having like a record amount of days in a row of over a hundred degrees. So oh, it's man. like, it's insane. So they actually moved the show from outside to inside, but it was still so hot. Like I, like oh. I was like drowning my kids in water. It was, it was crazy, but it was so much fun. I actually got yeah. to get Chris Kirkpatrick, a copy of B is for boy bands. Oh, so. that's incredible. I know. I'm so excited. My he he is, is an yeah. incredible guy, by the way. Uh, I don't know if y'all got to speak long, but he um he was on the original show and then we we hung out with him for a long time um at Sweetstock. And he is just an all right, you know, just down 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 good guy. You He's know, so cool. His whole family was great. Oh, that's incredible. He yeah. He, so uh, huge milestone i'm like yes we did it that's <laughs> huge man congrats on that that's pretty Thank awesome <laughs> one boy band member at a time no exactly way. exactly that's that's how to look at it ah. i was like texting my illustrator i'm like oh my <laughs> gosh you're not gonna believe this which i have to i have to talk about kelsey so yeah yeah let's see so her name is kelsey romans right yeah so we actually met on twitter Whoa. because we loved boy bands. So I don't even know who found who, but it's her and her best friend, Christina. And it was like, oh my gosh, we found somebody else who's like me, who's like a 20 something year old woman who is obsessed with all things boy bands. And yeah. we just like hit it off right away. Like I'm talking, this is probably almost like seven years ago, maybe? Wow. Yeah, so we kept in touch and she's an amazing artist. And like like I said, I've, I've been sitting on this for a while and when it mm -hmm. when it came down to it, like, all right, Al, let's do this. Let's put this together. There's nobody else. Like if she didn't want to jump on board, I, I wouldn't have put it out. Yeah. Like, so it's so perfect. So on the back, like it's more than just a band it's the friendships made and all of that stuff and that that's what it's all about kelsey included so i'm so grateful 
for meeting her just through Twitter because we love boy bands and <laughs> and now we have a book so we have a little book baby <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it starts you know I, I can tell you I've met I've had a lot of incredible opportunities I've met a lot of uh, incredible and, and amazing people and it's all because of the, the love for boy bands that I have especially being a guy it's very unusual to for men to profess their love for, for boy bands. Right. And for me, it's like, it's like a first love, <laughs> but, but we didn't break up, <laughs> you know, it's, it's so true. It's so true. And it's so crazy to say it like that, but, you know, I have loved boy bands since, you know, I'd say it's at least five, six, uh, six years old, you know, anything, you know, anyone harmonizing, I just fell in love with yeah. listening. You know? <laughs> like it's me in my throat. Like yeah, it does. I it does. <laughs> I get it. it. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful relationship that we've had, and uh, you know, it's it's still going strong. <laughs> but I want to I want to kind of discuss too uh, about the, you know, about about the '90s decade you know, there was a lot of good, there was a lot of bad things that happened. And we kind of, you kind of said something earlier that kind of sparked it, but, you know, do you remember when boy bands started breaking up in the late nineties and early two thousands? Are we really going there? Yeah, we really are. Because I think it's, it, it's hard. Dude, it. it really is hard. So yes, I have very specific stories for you so <laughs> joey mcintyre is who started it all but mm -hmm. dream street which i know you know all about dream street dream street sure is do. like what like changed everything for me mm. so all of a sudden it was like a lifestyle and i'm from new jersey they were from new york so a lot of their their shows and their mall tours and their signings at fyes and stuff we're on the East Coast. So I was prime location to hit them all. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's when it was like, can't eat, can't sleep, like <laughs> reach for the stars over, like, you know, world yeah. kind of stuff. Love for Dream Street. Obsessed. Um, you know, I have such amazing memories of our parents, like waking up at the crack of dawn to get us to a mall in Pennsylvania to see them perform in a food court. But you know what? Like the best memories, the yeah. best memories. Like I, I love them so much. And I actually, I sent a book to Greg too. So that's, see, oh, that's you incredible. Band members. I am on Two a down. roll. <laughs> I'm on a roll. Um, but yeah, of course, when things started slowing down, and you hear things, it was devastating. Yeah. And I actually, I think I was like 13 or 14, I wrote to Tiger Beat about, I can read it to you because I have it framed behind me. Uh, what? Yeah. What? Just a little thing I have. It's so what? embarrassing, but I'm so happy I have it. Okay. <laughs> First of all, this is this is kind of weird. Like I I just did this by myself, obviously still like yeah. underage on my PC and like whoever's <laughs> freaking at Tiger Beat was just like, yep, okay, do you have any pictures to include? And then we would go food shopping, my brother and I, and we would always want to go to the magazines, okay? Oh, yes. We're like, Dad, let us go to the magazines. He's like, fine, whatever. So we go to the magazines <laughs> and then we run up to him. And we're like, Dad, we need to buy this. He's like, you're not getting this. And we're like, but look, Allie's in it. I had no idea. Like, there was no correspondence saying like, hey, you are in the magazine. I just uh, happened uh, to see it when we were flipping through random magazines. No way. So, of course, we bought it. And I'm going to read it to you. Okay. Yes, please. It's it's called Still Dreamy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It says, Dream Street rocked my world for what seemed like forever, and then they slowly faded away. 
I miss the live performances that were so full of energy. All of us fans have been on the edge of our seats waiting for the legal battles to end so our favorite performers can get back to work. Until then, I'll settle for my picture of Chris and me. No which, way. Which he signed my Tiger Beat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. It's embarrassing, but I'm owning it because. That is incredible. <laughs> like, seriously, that is mind blowing, remarkable that you still have that. And how old were you when you wrote it? I, eighth grade. So I was like oh. 14. That obviously had to make the move from New Jersey to yeah. Texas. Like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, don't leave it on anybody's wall, you know? <laughs> oh, it's framed. I bring it with me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's, you know, Dream Street was definitely a huge part of my life. Um, you know, when people say Jesse McCartney, I think Dream Street. But a lot of people, even now, like, they're like, what do you mean he was in a boy band? And I'm like, oh, I've got receipts. Let's look this up. Like, <laughs> I show you. I just remember it happens. Like, I just remember, I remember watching it happens every time for the very first time. Um, it was unlike anything I've ever seen. Like, you, you know, just everything, them being on the bridge and, you know, just. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It I was crazy. Them, I was homesick from school and I just happened to see them on the freaking Maury show. Oh. And I hooked for life. <laughs> Man, when he's like, I love you too. It happens every time. <laughs> the boys know the dance. Like, everybody, yep. like, yes. We oh, I know that. the whole dance. I know we the entire listen. thing. <laughs> we love it so much. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> I, I absolutely, you know, I should have probably said Dream Street earlier because, man, they were, uh, especially, uh, was it 99, I think, when I first heard them, maybe 98. We could do a whole episode on Dream Street. We will, and we'll have Greg. <laughs> Yeah. I, I love Greg. Uh, I'm at, hopefully I'm going to give, I'm actually going to give him, give him a call tonight to discuss this, but hopefully he, uh, him and his family uh, will have a little free time. And uh, because we were actually supposed to meet in May, but the music man got out and my phone was on like 2%. And they, oh. him and his wife were seeing a show on like 53rd street or no, no, I'm sorry. Like seventh street or eighth street, like, 45 streets away it would have yeah. taken me a long time to get there and so we ended up not being able to uh to see each other but i think this time we're definitely going to make it happen and actually meet up and uh get some good food a good good really really good slice of pizza or something and um you know because uh for, his restaurant <laughs> yes yes you know that's, that's what i want to go do so i know all about that chicken so so you've been there no, no, but I know the type of chicken. And yes, <laughs> Perry, Perry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, it's yeah. Like, that's another episode. <laughs> oh, look, no, for sure. We'll, we'll definitely, uh, the possibilities are endless always on this show. And, um, but I would love to uh, just have an episode all about Dream Street because I kind of want to do that with you too. I want to kind of like break down and go to each thing, each boy band or each like person and talk about the memories for, and we could do it for a whole hour, six hours probably, uh, especially by Dream Street. You can't, you know, Dream Street will probably be on so point two. Memories and meetings and different, oh my gosh. I, I didn't get to like, see I, them, man. I never. I didn't. I well, mean, that's, that's because of your location, right? Like, that's yeah. what I said. Like, I was yeah. prime location. Like, I was right in New Jersey. So, they did a show right on one of our beaches for Radio oh. Disney. Um, and actually, like, Jesse and Chris, like, they actually did um, <laughs> solo performances there, too, so, like, down the line. So, I was still rocking with them wow. on Greg shows and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, so many malls and like random things like balloon festivals like yeah oh Dream yes Street. indeed oh, like I i'm gonna be there <laughs> <laughs> and that um, and that was a thing man with boy bands oh well, with dream street in particular like you know i really wish they would have been would have would have been able to stick around for a whole lot longer because uh even their first their first album you know uh a lot of things were like especially listening to it now like do they know what they're singing about 
you know, <laughs> and, and I feel which like that's with like everything, yeah. all of the music. And they were so young. I they know were, they weren't like fourteen. They weren't like eighteen, sixteen. They were babies. I mean, Jesse especially yeah. was a baby. Knew, you know, I know. Um, <laughs> but it's all in good fun. Like <laughs> it is. It is, and uh, the best thing uh, that you have is the memories that you can hold on to forever, pass them down. Uh, we might, we not, you know, we might have not had the iPhones or the, the the Samsungs back then to record every moment, but we have something greater, which is a working brain with the best memories still intact today. Uh, like I said, to where we can do a six hour episode dedicated to Dream Street. I know. And I, I, I do have some video, like my stepdad let me borrow like a full blown camcorder. <laughs> so I've, I've got some footage and honestly, next time I'm back at my mom's, like I need to do some work in the basement because I know yes. there are more relics and more goodies. Like I know I have so many things down there. So that's um that's on my list of things to do. So I can't wait to do that. Um, yeah, I'm jealous. memories like so fun. <laughs> it makes you kind of sad, you know, because I know, you know, like even for me, you know, just having Greg on the original show, it was mind blowing because it was like, you know, talking to someone that I was obsessed with as a kid, <laughs> you know, and uh, he's one of my all time favorite guests I've ever had. I mean even bigger than most people you'd probably look on the list and say even bigger than him, you know, just Greg was, Greg is, you can just tell he's very genuine. He's a really great he's guy. He's a real dude. He and, is. And, he and is. that's just great to see. Yeah. And so I guess, you know, we're going to have to do a dream street episode. So, you know, that's going to be in the works very shortly. <laughs> available. <laughs> just gonna, it's just, we're just going to start from the beginning to sadly the end. I you know, know. <laughs> but they but, were uh, all together. Uh, well, the four of them, you know. Yeah. Uh, when Chris passed away, I literally, like, I was not good. Um, yeah. Um, but I was, I was heartbroken. Of course, they got together to do "It Happens Every Time," and that. Wow. Yes. It's beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time, and they all were together at one of Jesse's shows in New York, which. That rules. That was the week I went to New York. <laughs> oh, you should have been there. I should have, but you uh that too. And I was kind of planning on it, but I said, you know what? I'm gonna be going see him the week after from New York in New Orleans, which I didn't end up uh being able to go, but I did buy the live stream. So we watched it at the house and with all our speakers and everything, and uh oh. that was amazing. But I should have just went to New York. Should have just went to the New York location and next uh, time. Cause that, that would have been surreal. I don't know if I would have been able to contain myself. <laughs> no, no, I would have died. I would have died. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's just, you know, you know, sharing these memories and it's like opening up Pandora's box in a lot of ways, because there's just things that, that click when, when, when people I have on the show say something like everything, the memories start flooding in and it never fails every episode and makes me think about things I haven't really thought about or even could have remembered. Right. You know, and I remember talking to someone recently and there's this, there was this brother band called something and Jared. Um, Evan and Jared, Evan and Jared, you know, like I had never for years, I had never thought about them. Thought about them. <laughs> and then the other day I had Spotify on nineties uh, mix random mm -hmm. and i and i heard uh was it get the girl or um they're i mean they're they're number one hit you it know? just came on mine too i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> but boy just listening to that song flooded the memories like things were just coming back to me when i you know like hearing it remembering where i was hearing it like things you just don't even think about right you know and uh, it, it makes me sad because it's been a long time, <laughs> you know, but uh, I've had a, you know, uh, we have had some amazing moments in our life, especially in, in, in those days and to now, you know, to where we can kind of configure and remember and just re reminisce like this, just talking nonstop 
about the things we love and the things we miss and uh and and you know it's and dream street is definitely one you know dream street was my goodness i just i remember being glued to my tv for it happens every time i'm just i remember like jesse you like just doing ooh, ooh, you know and i mean i just i remember everything you know and, and like chris was like doing his homework in the beginning of <laughs> oh yeah oh gosh uh, i'm like oh that, and then <laughs> you had the background you had you know like it was just so uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it was the first uh, video that was high definition for music. I think um, it was like a million dollar budget or something. It was oh, insane. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about because I, I watched Craig on your interview. So, yeah, I definitely yeah. been that. And then you look at it, you're like, that's just a green <laughs> screen. <laughs> you know, like, but, but hey, I mean, back then things didn't work out to where you just put a, a screen and put two lights and then you say go. And you just do the dance, you know, there was a whole lot more to it. And obviously um, they did a pretty good job. We're still yeah. talking about it. I mean, for real. <laughs> I'm going to watch it right after we get off of this call. <laughs> it, it's going to be on replay for about two hours after this. So I'm going to call Greg and have that on and just go, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> that would be very, very weird. I'm not doing that. But, uh, but, no, uh, you got to play it cool, dude. <laughs> you got to play it cool. You got to just, you know, be chill. And, uh, but I think, you're right. I think we do need, uh, you know, when me and Vicky get to New York, I think we do need to go check out uh, his restaurant because it. it's a little far from New York. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. Like, oh, that's right. Uh, northeast. If you have I guess time, east. Then, you know. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll make time. <laughs> we'll definitely make time. But I really don't have time, but we'll definitely make time. Um, but yeah, uh, Ali, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. Um, you know, I, I told you before, it's probably not just going to be one episode that you're going to be a part of. And now we're about to start a new series where we're just going to break down every band. Uh, I mean, man, we, we can make get into it. Like I interviewed <laughs> the Backstreet Boys before, like yeah. I had a tattoo met that like, oh didn't, didn't get started. into anything. <laughs> Did, you know, I, I, I sort of tell everybody all the time, like, you know, we, we, we did a, a four, uh, about a 50 minute episode and we didn't get anything accomplished. <laughs> like, it's, fine. it's fine. There will be more. I'll come with my stories. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and especially with dream street, we'll, we'll, we'll start from the beginning with, uh, some new kids and then we'll move to dream street and backstreet and Brittany and Christina. Oh but God. I want you to tell us uh, exactly where can we find your book? It's and, on uh, Amazon. Just search B is for boy bands. You can follow me as well um, at B is for boy bands. I've, I've been like, like I said, I'm getting like creative again and I'm, I'm back to myself. So I'm like putting out some more reels and stuff like that. And I'm having a lot of fun doing that. Um, but yeah, any information about the book and like events coming up, it's all there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Miss Allie, it is amazing meeting you. It's amazing having you on this show. We we made it happen pretty quick too, which yeah. is really, really cool. And... We, we have to say how we met. I we met oh, that's basically true. in O Town comments. <laughs> <laughs> Literally in an O Town comment. It was the best thing ever, though, because look what's blossomed. I know. You know? See, it's meant to be. <laughs> and this, this this is how it happens every. It happens every time. Oh my! You goodness. did not just do that. I did the pun. Oh my goodness. We have to end it here now. That's it. There's nothing left to say. Like the next thing is just me a black screen. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. All right. <laughs> guys, this is the Frack and Friends show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for the love and support you guys continue giving. Uh, um, uh, what, 17 episodes later? It might be 16, but we'll just say 17 just That's to skip cool. a number, you know. And uh, this is uh, Miss Allie. Again, guys, B is for boy band. Uh, it's for boy bands is available on Amazon. Check her out, buy it. You guys will absolutely enjoy it. You don't have to be a child to read this. It is uh, for all ages and you boy band lovers. Yay! So thank you guys so much for listening and watching, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care. We did it. <laughs>